Well, we're sticking with the ESG investing theme here. A new study by PwC found that nearly nine in 10 institutional investors believe that asset managers should be more proactive in developing new ESG products. But fewer than half of asset managers were planning to launch new SG funds. So what's an investor to do? Joining us now is Bruce Usher, a Columbia Business School professor and author of the new book, Investing in the Era of climate change. And Bruce, you've been arguing that despite the economic backdrop, this is kind of the time to be investing in some of these green names. Walk me through that thesis. Absolutely. It's really about the macro trends, climate change. We know the climate science. We know that after 300 years of building a global economy that's putting emissions in the atmosphere, we've got 30 years to decarbonize to avoid catastrophic climate change. So you've got consumers pushing to buy more sustainable goods. You've got employees saying they want to work for sustainable companies. You now have investors looking at those trends, company leaders saying we need to meet those trends. You have government action like the Inflation Reduction Act pouring support into this. And lastly, you have physical risks of climate change manifesting themselves, more violent storms, heat waves. So all these macro trends are all pushing the same direction. And they're gonna be with us for decades to come. How do you break that down though for investors who are looking at this and saying, well, okay, there's questions about ESG funds, and we'll get into that in just a bit. But in terms of the names, there's you know EVs, which some would argue that that's actually not a, a long-term play in terms of um, impact on climate change. There are many other names that may, may be potentially being overlooked. Right. So when I looked at this sector 20 years ago, as to how long I've been in it, the big challenge then was there was nothing to invest in. If you look at the whole solar power market, everything globally, there's less solar than one coal plant. Last year, the investment in solar, more than 100 coal plants worth and gaining. So the big picture here is that the opportunity to invest is now trillion dollar sectors. We've got the EV sector, all the automakers are going EVs. The key question is why? The reason is that those products are better than the incumbent product that was out there before. Mm. So you look at, look at EVs, specifically since you asked about that, why are EV sales so good? Because consumers love them. Consumers prefer EV products. They're flying out the showrooms, in fact, Consumer, the car makers can't keep up with demand. They prefer the products, but it's still a very small portion, right? We're talking roughly, what, 5%? About 5%. But 5%. Now, analysis has shown that around 5%, you get a tipping point in these markets. And that's what the automakers are seeing. You're, you're, you have to ask yourself, why are they all rushing into this market? What do they see? What they see is five years ahead. When they're planning new cars, they're looking five years in the future. That's how long it takes to roll out a new model. And what they see is an all of EV future because it's a better product, consumers like it. And then we have these trends around climate change. So that's what's, what's really pushing that. And that's what's creating the investment opportunities. When consumers and businesses go in this direction, the market opens up to investors. We have seen um, incredible amount of inflows into ESG funds over the last few years. Uh, a bit of a reckoning, some would argue, that's happening right now. Not just this being politicized, but you've also got those like Deutsche Bank, some other names who are now being called out for greenwashing. The funds that, the, the names that were included in these funds were not necessarily sort of green, so to speak. What do you think, I mean, what do you think is happening here? How, how does this manifest itself from an investor perspective? Those who've been putting money behind these saying they were anticipating some impact coming from these funds. Well, it turns out that's not actually what ESG investing is, that's, right? That's correct, exactly. And there's a real misunderstanding around ESG. ESG investing is really very simple. It's saying, look, when I look at potentially investing in an asset, I look at financial numbers, I look at management, I look at all these things, and then also, to be a smarter investor, what else could put this investment at risk? What else could change the outcomes? Look at risks like flooding or hurricanes or wildfires. How could that affect my investment? If you, if you were to go out and buy a house, a second home on the coast, would you want to know if it's going to flood? Would you want to know? You, that'd be a smart thing to know. That's what ESG investing is. It can make you a better business manager. It can make you a better investor. The challenge, though, is it doesn't really address climate change. Just because you buy that, just because you decide I'm going to walk away from that house, or I'm going to pay less for it because it's at flood risk, that doesn't reduce the risk of flooding. So That's the challenge. So how do you invest from an impact standpoint? So from an impact standpoint, it's much more important that you go beyond ESG investing. And there's really two strategies that I write about in my book. One is what we call thematic. So pick a theme that you're excited about, you're comfortable with. If you're really interested in renewable energy, invest in the solar or wind, wind uh, funds. There's plenty of those out there. That's a way to really channel money into a solution. Or if you're interested in EVs, into either EV company stocks or funds. Those are thematic funds. There's also now new funds coming out in green hydrogen, other leading technologies. So you can have a thematic focus, it could be an equity, debt, venture capital, as you wish. Or you can have what we call an impact first focus. Now this is, this is very special in the sense that it's really only for high net worth investors. Impact first is not following a fiduciary responsibility. It's saying, 
I really want to address climate change. I'm going to put my capital into that. I might get a return. The return might be decades from now, but it's going to have great impact. And that's where you're really investing in technologies that aren't yet commercial. This goes well beyond, say, solar and EVs. This is in some new technologies like direct air capture, for example. And really quickly, what about green bonds? So green bonds are issued by companies because they see these trends coming. They see these sustainability trends. Consumers want it. Investors want it. It's, again, thinking about how is, how is the world decarbonizing and what does that mean for my business? A green bond makes perfect sense. Though, again, a green bond is not going to have tremendous impact on the environment. It's just a very sensible investment. Okay, good to differentiate those two. Bruce Usher, Columbia Business School professor and author of the book, Investing in the Era of Climate Change. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.